Hi there everyone, Tiny One Badger here, and today we're going to be working on making a short muzzled moving jaw for a fursuit. Now, moving jaws are the coolest thing ever, but they're also really finicky and hard to do. The thing about foam based fursuit heads is it's so difficult to get good movement out of short muzzles. Sometimes you just don't get any movement at all. If you have a long muzzle, it's not really a problem, like in this monstrosity I just pulled out of my closet. You see, with a long muzzle, Good movement comes very easily. I'm not saying this is a good fursuit, but the mouth is moving, you can agree to that. But the thing is, even with me enunciating as much as I can, it can still be really difficult to get the straw to move. And that's where resin bases come into play. You see, Clyde, he's a short muzzled fursuit. Uh, his back's just gonna be open for this demonstration. He's a short muzzled fursuit, but the jaw movement is pretty good. You know, all things considered. Considering I made this thing, uh, what, three years ago? Yeah. Uh, the jaw movement is not horrible. So, when you have a resin base, it's a lot easier to get good, natural movements. But the thing about resin is it's expensive, it's hard to do, it's toxic, you need so many things to make sure that you're not going to get cancer from doing it, and it's just generally not fun to do. And most big, big time makers don't really bother making resin toony heads because, well, toony heads are easy to make. So, usually, when I have a short muzzled character, like, look at this guy, he literally barely has a lower jaw, I usually just keep them static. And static means they don't move, I know, it's confusing, fursuit lingo is stupid. So, I'm going to teach you in this tutorial how to make the best movement that you can out of a short muzzled foam based fursuit, still using the elastic method. Let's go! Just pretend this is a measuring tape. The measurements you're going to need to take, don't wear a hat for this, I'm just wearing a hat, uh, are going to be around the head, over the head from ear to ear, and from, the, from this ear to this ear, meeting up right around that around the head measurement. So you're going to take those three measurements and you're going to cut some elastic. But the thing about elastic is you're going to want it to have a little bit of pull, so I would say take off about an inch and a half. These are the elastic strips that I cut out. Build up a styrofoam head with duct tape or paper towels or newspaper until you get it to match your exact measurements. Not the ones that you cut off a little bit for the elastic, but your exact measurements. That's what's going to make this moving jaw perfect. And what you want to do is put those elastic strips all around your head and mark where they meet. I'll have a little diagram in the description, I promise I'll, I might actually have a diagram this time, in the description of how I usually do mine. And you can also watch the canine hybrid tutorial to figure out how she does moving jaws. The only difference is I am not using a ski mask with this. Now, sew these pieces together. I'm using a sewing machine, but you can also just hand sew these. It's going to be really simple. You could hot glue them together, but I just think that sewing them would be a little bit more sturdy. This is what they look like on my foam base. Once you have this magical little construction of elastic, then Start sculpting your fursuit head. Use whatever method you want, but just start sculpting your fursuit head. But don't glue anything down to that jaw piece. The piece that goes from ear to ear and over your jaw, don't glue anything to that. You can glue around the entire rim of the headpiece and the piece that goes from one ear over your head to the other ear. But you can't glue to that piece that goes from your ear to your jaw to your other ear. That piece needs to remain floating inside of the fursuit head. You're going to glue this to the jaw when you're finished and it needs to maintain its mobility. Foam bases tend to look much more natural when you sculpt the entire head and then cut the jaw away at the last minutes. If you sculpt the entire head and then sculpt the jaw last, then it tends to look like the jaw was sculpted last. It looks like a more cohesive piece if you sculpt it all together. And once you have a foam base sitting in front of you, what you have to do is glue down the entire lower jaw to that elastic piece, wait for it to dry, and then cut it away from the rest of the foam base. So the lower jaw will sort of just 
flop along with the elastic piece, but when you put your head in it, the doll will rest exactly where it's supposed to. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something. I'm really sorry there's such a delay on my last how to make a fursuit video. I'm I'm working on it guys. I'm really working on it. I'm sorry. Also, uh, with my fursuit making company, Badger Factory, I just opened up for commission. So if you want to check those out, all of my links are in the description, all of my prices and stuff. So uh, yeah, it would really help me out if you guys wanted a commission from me. You don't have to. I still love you guys for watching my channel. Um, yeah, I'm just rambling at this point. Um, yeah.